Okay. Welcome to. Oh, you've got notes Taking this notes. time. Prepared. Wow. All right. What? It's all up here. Uh -huh. Welcome to the sports office, a Halloween edition, guys, so you know what that means. We're having candy. Oh, thank goodness. We film these things a day before we release them, so it is Halloween for us. Another twist in everyone's favorite soap opera that is the Denver Broncos. Joe Flacco, we have learned today, officially out four to six weeks, doesn't need surgery. Now, most people, of course, I was seeing on Twitter say, oh, Joe Flacco was kind of spicy about his coach after the game, and now he's not starting. A neck injury, huh? Well, guess what? Romy and I were yeah. in Indianapolis. We were in the locker room post game. The dude's neck was hurt. Yeah. Trust us. That rumor is grade A below me. <laughs> yes. okay. There was rarely a time where that dude was not not rubbing Ooh. his neck. I'm not going to lie. I kind of like the conspiracy theory more. <laughs> I believe you guys. But how cool is it that Don Fangio traded away Emmanuel Sanders after talking bad about the offense? Joe Flacco, <laughs> no longer the starting quarterback. Don't speak bad about the family. The dude famous for the all gray sweatsuit <laughs> definitely really cares about what his Joe players Flacco are saying about him. Yeah, that. <laughs> so because of said injury, we get, well, everyone gets a first look at Brandon Allen. Uh, let's not talk too much about him because I don't have that much B-roll of him, to be honest. Brandon Allen starting, but I guess the next question now is for how long? And that brings us to Mr. Drew Locke. Here's kind of what he said about the situation as to him getting into the quarterback situation. I don't think there's frustration in that I'm not the guy this week. I think there's frustration in the fact that, you know, it's been this long and, you know, I'm, I've been, you know, doing virtual reality reps. Um, it's going to be much anticipated for my half to be able to get back on the field. Whenever they're ready, I'll be ready. So now that's going to bring us to our official first segment of what did they really mean? Mike and Romy ask athletes so many questions that they can probably give the answer to the question before the question is asked. It's true. That is because all of these athletes have media training and what what to say and what not to say. Mike, you're a Mizzou guy, so yeah. I'm gonna... I, I, we went to the same school. Right, so I think you would understand the same language. Mike, when you heard those Drew Locke comments, what did he really mean? My last name is Locke. We've heard a lot of chants in the media. Lock him up, lock her up. Set me free! Set me free! They have locked me up. My last name is Locke. I don't want to be locked up. I am ready to go. Let me be the quarterback of the Denver Broncos. Certainly an awkward dot to connect, but yes. Are they playing this right? I don't understand why he's not practicing, but I understand why he's not playing. If, if you think this dude is incapable of playing the quarterback position at an NFL level right now, you are sending him out there to just break himself. He's gonna have bad habits for the rest of his career because he's gonna be, you know, he's gonna be Sam Darnold. He's gonna be seeing ghosts. They're slow playing this, and their plan all along was to slow play this. For me, December is the mark, because you look at the two games after the bye, you got Minnesota, you got Bills, you got two defenses that, you, like you said, are gonna make Locke see ghosts. You look at the December schedule, that is actually looks like one where he could get enough practice just without getting the crap beaten out of them. Speaking of people digging into their backups, uh, the Colorado Avalanche. Yeah. All of a sudden, Miko's gone. Gabe Landeskog might be gone longer than Miko. Uh, Nikita Zdorov was banged up. It feels like last spring all over again. Did this not just happen yeah. in the last like eight weeks true. before the very, postseason? Very true. I think it's a good thing that it happened at the beginning of the season. I also think it's a good thing that they built this kind of cushion by playing so well while those guys were healthy. Now, that I think is going to help them, but this team is not going anywhere without those two guys in the lineup. Now time for some behind the scenes vlog footage. Romy and I, it was our turn to travel with the Broncos. And so of course there was a, another travel vlog where we show you what it's like to travel with a television crew. This was the first instance I have seen uh, like Pee Wee football played on the field beforehand. And so I was catching all these teams walking onto the field and uh, just check out this uh, little Pee Wee's Pee Wee players thoughts on the situation. All right, that big TV has shows us. All right, that's nice. That is nice. <laughs> you always gotta take a step back and realize how kind of cool it I is to it. be just down on the field. As you folks saw on TV, it was actually a nice day in Indianapolis. Well, we get there about four, three, four hours early and it was cold. 
It not was, a nice morning. It was not fun. We were very happy that we were going to be inside of a dome. Until, of course, they opened it up when it was still cold. Now, the person who didn't like this was Dave Willie, our camera, or photographer. Um, because, well, he'll explain. We packed for a dome. Why am I wearing a coat in a dome? Please explain this to me. You spend hundreds of millions of dollars to build a dome, and then on a cold day, you open the roof. I don't get it. <laughs> So that is, that is as Dave Willie as it gets. Yeah. If you want to know what it's like to travel with CBS4, that. Hey, Romy, can you just explain uh, what you're doing on the sideline with Vaughn Miller's girlfriend? Megan Denise. Yeah. I met Megan Denise last year at the Cincinnati game, and she was so nice. Super okay. nice and just awesome. Yeah, she like knew who you and were. Then, I was like, what? I know. And then I came back up to her this time, and she was like, hey, I've been looking for And I was like totally surprised. I was like, I did not was think she would you. know. Right. Finally, after the game, Portland Sutton in the locker room talking about uh, 34, and if he can guard him. Yeah. 34, Cody. Couldn't check you. Do you feel like? Yeah, bro couldn't guard me. Yeah. <laughs> Simple. He couldn't guard me. Yeah, broken yeah, guard bro couldn't guard me. That's uh, so, great. so I was. Uh, he was He's not wrong. He's not wrong not at wrong. all. Cortland Sutton, one of the few bright spots on the team this year. And actually, it's a good transition to our our final segment, our hats off segment. This is where we give recognition to players from the past week that did something probably pretty great and just didn't get like the recognition they deserve. Do y'all want to start? Go ahead. Okay. Mine's a little bit obscure. My hat's off. Whoa. Oh, huh. <laughs> Broncos cornerback Devontae Harris. So Chris Harris was asked about Devontae Harris and being put into to a bigger role. And he said something that I really like. He said, he's with me the way I was with Champ Bailey. He said that Devontae Harris just comes, he's asking questions all day long. When you hear the way Champ talks about Chris, to hear that you know Chris is now mentoring somebody else, I really like that. So I give my hats off to, to Devontae Harris for taking that initiative. We'll stick with uh, the Denver Broncos uh, defensive backfield. Hats off to Mr. Justin Simmons, who I think is the only player on the Broncos right now having a Pro Bowl season. Hopefully he gets that recognition, but if he doesn't, here it is. Hats off to you, Justin Simmons. You've been killing it this year. That's cool. It's like, Justin Simmons, if you don't get to the Pro Bowl, at least you got a hats off for my green. I don't know what is a more distinguished honor. We'll let him decide. Yeah. Henry the uh, generic hat, would you? Generic hat. Actually, no, 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 no. The CSU hat. Ooh. Uh, I'm going hats off to the CSU volleyball team. Oh my God. 14th in the country. They just won their 20th straight game. That's awesome. Keep it up, ladies. Yes. One of the best dynasties in the history Those of Colorado sports. Slay. Those CSU Ram volleyball teams. They have been killing it since I was in college, which was so long ago. Yeah, we old. Some more candy before we uh, officially sign I off here. I didn't get any red ones. You didn't get any red ones, that's we gotta true. try. See which ones are more sour. For another edition of Welcome to the Sports Office, we would like to say goodbye from the sports office. It looks like people want to talk to us now. <laughs> oh.